Today is World Communion Sunday, and as such, it is an important day for the life of the church. World Communion Sunday is a day when all churches are called to celebrate Holy Communion together. It's um, for some churches that celebrate weekly communion, it's just Sunday. But for churches that don't celebrate weekly communion, some churches celebrate communion quarterly, some even just do it twice a year, uh, this is the day that all Christians are asked to celebrate communion together as a sign of our unity. And it's an important day because this is the meal that unites us. Meals are such an important part of our culture, aren't they? I remember Sunday dinners at my grandmother's house. When my grandparents died, those meals stopped happening. Meals united us as a family. Church meals unite us as a family. Our fellowship hour after church, join us today, by the way, for cake and coffee as we celebrate Nathan's being with us. Amy did a wonderful fellowship hour for us. Meals help us celebrate. They also help us to show support when life is hard. People bring food when someone dies. We gather to eat together when we're having a rough time. This is an important day for me because I remember as a child, I think of my grandmother often. My grandmother died 45 years ago yesterday, so October 1st is always one of those days that's a little clouded of shadow for me. She was the one who helped raise me, my dominant mother figure. But I wouldn't be who I am today in ministry if it wasn't for her. I remember standing by her side as a young boy, Every time we celebrated communion at Trinity Church, cutting the slicing the corners off the white bread and making little cubes and filling the little cups and setting up the altar, and I'd help her do everything. I loved it. And I think it's one of the reasons why I have such a Eucharistic spirituality today even and why I stand in ministry today is because of the gift of those moments with her. The names we use for this meal and this day matter, don't they? And I want to explore that with us just briefly today. Because they each give to us just a little bit of an, of an emphasis of what the holy meal is and, and what it celebrates for us as people of faith. Some traditions, not always ours, call it the Lord's Supper. That's sort of a foreign term to my mind. I don't think I've ever used that term naturally in my own vernacular. The Lord's Supper, it reminds us of the night that Christ gave the meal. A meal that was given with a commandment to love one another. The word for commandment in Latin is mondatum. If you've heard the term mondi Thursday, it's mondatum, the new commandment. I give to you, love one another as I have loved you. And then he washed the disciples' feet. And Peter wouldn't let him. And he said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you cannot be my disciple. Now love each other as I have loved you. There is a link in that night. And the Lord's Supper reminds us of that night. There's a link between the holy meal and holy lives. We can't go to the meal if we're not nourished and empowered to go into the world to serve. is Eucharist. It's one I use more frequently. The word Eucharistia in Latin, it means to give thanks. We give thanks. It is the great thanksgiving, the technical name of the prayer that we pray over the elements to consecrate them. It is thanksgiving because somehow we know that when we celebrate, Christ is here. We don't identify it the way some churches do. We don't need to define it as some Christians are wont to do. The first element of a sacrament, as St. Paul says, is mysterion, mystery. We could explain it all day long, and we'd still be just our own hypotheses. Even St. Thomas Aquinas, who wrote tomes about the presence of Christ in communion, said he only guessed. There was no real concrete way of knowing. We just know that somehow, when we receive the presence of bread and cup, we receive Christ spiritually. That somehow, what makes Christ present then makes Christ present here and empowers us to be Christ's presence for the world around us. That through the power of the Holy Spirit, something transformative happens in us. And we commune with Christ and with each other. Communion. 
Co-union. Union with. We commune with Christ. We commune with each other. But we also commune as a promise with those who have come before us and those who await us in the heavenly kingdom. The, heavenly, the, heaven, the, 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 the holy meal reminds us of a heavenly banquet. It reminds us that those with whom we prepared this meal when I was that big, one day will stand with me again and celebrate this meal in the kingdom of God. It reminds us that those we love are really not that far away. And it reminds us that in Christ we are still united. Today on this World Communion Sunday, it has a whole different context in communion. It reminds us that those with whom we share our baptism from other communions, they, they may not think or worship or believe exactly as we do, but we're still united with them as well. I remember a few years ago when the day center for the homeless community in Frederick came to us and needed a place to live, and we gave them space here. There were some raised eyebrows. Pastor Rob, we're inviting the Salvation Army. Do you realize how homophobic they can be at times? Is that really who we want to be in ministry with? Well, I wasn't going to point you out. <laughs> and he owns it. God love a man who says it and owns it. You weren't the only one. I had to kind of wrestle with that. I really did. I got to tell you, as an open affirming church with LGBT people, as a gay man myself, the question is, really? And then I began to realize, you know what? We don't need to be in bed on every issue, as one of my bishops used to say, to be a ministry together for Jesus Christ. Our baptism is what unites us, not our theologies. And it's not about us. It's about ministering to people who need a place to be. It's about safety. It's about being present as Christ would be present for those around him. He didn't ask what they believed. He didn't ask who they loved. He didn't ask whether they had or they didn't have. He simply said, what do you need? And come follow me and be whole. That's it. And so we opened up and we began a ministry with the Salvation Army. And I have to tell you, it was an odd pairing. Who would have thought that Ken from the Salvation Army would have been one of my closest colleagues in this community until he moved away? The captain of the Salvation Army contacted me by text on January 6th because he knows I'm married to a D.C. cop and said, where is your husband? Is he safe? Praying for him. Not only did he reach out, he used the H word. That's huge to use another H word because this isn't about us. It was about our baptisms calling us to be together in ministry for the world around us. That's World Communion Sunday in a way. It just reminds us that, you know what? We may differ in so many ways from other faith groups, and that's okay. Because ultimately, it's really about how we're being called by the waters of the font of our baptism to work together to change lives for Jesus Christ. Amen.